Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Yamaha on the water. This is my Yamaha. What kind of Yamaha are you? You know, if you want to try something a little bit different, especially if you don't own a boat, and at Ask Italo, I get so many emails saying, where can I go shore fishing? Well, let me give you some advice. There are a few places you can get fish from shore, but if you want to stealth fish and get into areas that a lot of boats don't get into, very cost efficiently, even if you don't have the room to store a boat, a kayak is a good alternative. I've got a nice smallmouth here. You know, it's in the middle of the day, I think because I'm using this twitching technique, these fish are still coming up out of the deeper water and hitting that twitch bait. Man, I was lucky to hold this guy on. They've got so much energy. Don't know if he's gonna get off. I'm just trying to get him tired out. You know what? This fish actually has a hook in its mouth from somebody else. So I got a feeling he broke somebody's line and he might even get off here. Let's see if I can just grab a hold of him. Okay, I've got a hold of them. Don't know if I can get the hook out without the pliers. Maybe what I'll do is just hold them there for a minute. Now, do you see that hook that's in the roof of his mouth? So there's my twitch bait. I got that out. You can see that there's a worm hook right here. So someone had this guy on soft plastic. See that worm hook that's sticking out of his mouth? That's about a two and a half pound small mouth. And guess what? I've got a brand new hook. And this guy's going to be set free, so it's his lucky day. Not only did he get a chance to star on television, he's going to have this piercing taken out. Look at that. Aren't they gorgeous fish? Look at the models on their back. You know, I've drifted up onto this bank. You can appreciate how clear the water is here. I'll hold them just below the surface. You know, they're amazing. That fish jumped about four or five times out of the water and ended up having one hook in it out of the two trebles. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous sight? You can see how clear that water is. Watch how he's gonna cruise off here. Hopefully you can follow him in this clear water. Bye, beautiful. Come on, don't go under the kayak. You go out on your own into that deeper water. See how modeled he is? He just disappears. That's amazing. Now you know, I've been using these twitch baits here in different sizes, but that number 10 X-Wrap is really what's been doing it. And I'm gonna show you some of the models here. You know, when you get the fishing package version, of the ocean kayak they actually give you the sonar that's all part of the package with the transducer and of course i'm almost on land here i'm very shallow water you also get the built-in rod holders that i've got here behind me on my seat there's one in the front underneath my paddle there and you also get the rod holders that actually extend up just like the ones we use in the great lakes but they also give you these tackle boxes that uh, have a seal see the seal that's inside the tackle box because remember, a lot of the guys are getting these and using them in salt water, so they don't want their lures to get rusty. But here's a selection of some of the twitch baits that I've been using. And the one that's really been producing most of the fish is the X-Wrap, and in the number 10 size, this is the 10 centimeter size. You can see how brilliant that silver sheen is if I move it left and right, even though we're partially in the shade here. This lure seems to be just the right size, and the X-Wraps, have this trademark it's almost like that little bit of hackle and crystal flash on the back that I think actually sometimes gets the fish to hit when they follow so that's the number 10 the other lure that I've been getting fish on and I've missed a lot of fish in, in fact three in a row has been the old reliable husky jerk so this is the husky jerk this is probably the first jerk bait in a slash bait that um, was out on the market really for that purpose and it's uh, made out of plastic it rattles you can hear the rattles and it suspends and this particular one is 14 centimeters so there's the difference see this one is 10 centimeters from the tip to the back and then this one is four extra centimeters long so either one of these work really well actually throughout the year you know they're a great summertime lure if you're fishing water less than 10 feet all you do is you cast it out when it hits the water reel it in a little bit maybe five ten feet and then start twitching it and by twitching it we mean that you pull the lure tight and then it has slack line, you pick up the slack line and then pull the lure tight again. That's the best way to explain it. And a lot of times when you don't expect it, you go to twitch it and there's a dead weight on it and that's when you have to set the hook. And this morning I've lost like three fish in a row where they've actually come out of the water and thrown the hook because they probably hit the lure, I didn't feel it. By the time I went to set the hook, they got off, I couldn't hook them. 
So it's such an easy way to fish. And you know, in the kayak, there's lots of room. This particular one has a, a whole uh, hollow underneath. See right here, it says rod pot. If I lift this up, I have a tray where I've got a couple of things. And then underneath, I can actually put all my rods. And when I'm not using my sonar, I can pack that away. And then I've got another access at the front. It's a locker that you can get right underneath. What I like about the sit-on-top kayaks, especially for fishing open water, like the Great Lakes, is that um, even if water splashes over, it drains out. I don't know if you can see the drain hole. See this hole that's right here? Actually, you might be able to see this one over here. There's a hole right here. Well, that hole goes right to the bottom. There's water down there, and it's molded. The boat is molded around that hole. So even if water splashes in, it just drains out. If water splashes in here, it drains out which is really smart. So it's very buoyant, very easy to maneuver. I bet you're curious about my top speed. With no wind, I'm about 5.5 miles an hour. Um, with, with the wind, about 6.5 at a normal paddle. Against the wind, I can get up to 3.7 miles an hour. Is that a good performance? I can't give you miles per gallon because you know what? This doesn't burn petroleum, but it sure works good. And you can catch fish just like fishing out of a bigger boat and save some money.